Hello. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going really good. How are you? Oh, not bad at all. Veronica, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's and, me. It, and everyone else is here too? I think we have everybody else. Yeah. Yes, we do have everyone else. It's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be on with the Scotian Canadian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beth yeah. is with us as well. Hello. Hey, how's Hello. it going? It's super. It's super cool super to. Uh, enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. It's super <laughs> cool to chat with you guys because I was uh, the Habs Unfiltered guys popped on first, and I was saying to them that uh, those guys and you guys were like literally the first um, like Habs fan created podcast I listened I listened to years ago, and you were inspiration oh for me God, to start. No, for well, sure. That's great. Glad that we could be that for somebody. That's really cool. We had no idea that that was a fact. And yeah, you like, have us blushing over here. You can't see us, but we're, we're all blushing off you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, it was it was a while back, and it was a uh, it was it was a uh, around the Weber PK Subban trade time, or maybe a year after something like that. I remember listening to it. And I was like, this is like really cool. And one of the things I picked up on right away was that, I mean, you guys go to games often, don't you? Uh, when we can go, at least for sure. And um, just yeah. to clear up uh, when we started, um, uh, so couple things there um march 10th is today and it happens yes. to be the happy hours birthday which is a, a kind of a, a happy coincidence no and way we've been doing this for a three yeah we've been doing this for three years now we started in the 2017 2018 season it was the season before we got kotka niemi and uh that was not a great season no. <laughs> to start really. it wasn't it wasn't a great time to start a habs positivity podcast but well, we did it anyway because we were so yeah. sick and tired of everything that we were listening and reading and just you know not everything is bad I mean there, there are lost seasons that I mean there's it's it's so sort of toxic to just be mired in all of the negativity and so we were trying to shine like like our other original OG co-host um, Ashley said just to kind of shine a light into the darkness. And so that's, that's how we started. That's, that's right. That's amazing. Yeah, and that's that, part- sorry to cut you off. I was just going to say, that's the same kind of thing with me. I was like, I can't like you tune onto the TV and whatever Mark Bergevin did, it was shit right out of the gate. Yeah. And it was hard. <laughs> and I felt like myself, I was tired of listening to it. So I was like, there's gotta be other people out there that are tired of this. And that's how I found you guys. Yeah. And that's why well, we're glad, glad to hear that. Yeah, I feel like um, that's why we started it because we wanted to sort of be that thing that we wanted to hear that didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I heard your guys's. I was listening to your guys's uh, episode today with Angles, and it was uh, fantastic. I think my favorite part, honestly, and I'm all for this, was uh, Veronica. You going back and forth with Eric about <laughs> Steph, Steph and Wait and him going to the media after he was let go. I loved it, and I. That, um... I think that it seems like I know you've had him on in the past as well. So it seems like you guys have developed kind of a good professional we relationship. Haven't. You haven't? Wow. No, that so was that's here. was a first time guy. Yeah. And that, it was yeah. a really great episode overall. I was really, really happy with how candid he was, like even outside of the Stefan Waite uh, stuff. Um, talking about the, the whole segment that he mentioned about uh, the media's relationship with the team before and during COVID, I thought was super great uh, to listen to because we never hear a media guy talk about it like that yeah. openly. Mm. So I was so happy that he was that honest with us. And it was a, it was a really, I, I didn't know what to expect with Eric uh, coming on because we don't agree all the time with stuff. But that's one of the reasons why we had him on too. Yeah. Veronica and Eric won the butt heads and we let it happen. <laughs> and we got a lot of really good uh, content out of it. It was really cool to listen to. I had a very terse um, DM from Eric last week after I tweeted out my tweet about um, <laughs> about the media and all of that. And so he was just like, excuse me. And I was like, excuse you. And then I said, you should come on the podcast. And that's how that happened. And then he did. <laughs> and then he did. Yeah. So like, that's amazing. I like uh, me as well. Like Eric and I, uh, when I first started my stuff, but it heads big time. I, if you go back on my channel, one of my, f- I think like third or fourth videos ever, I I went hard at Sportsnet for disrespecting Pacioretty's captaincy golf tournament and not covering the main aspect of it and drawing up drama before the season started. I was yeah. pissed. I was pissed. And him and I ended up, you know, having some chats yep. and DMs. But at the same time, like, he, I have a lot of respect for him engaging with fans in that way. So to hear that you guys had that disagreement and then he jumps on your podcast, like, how do you not yeah. like the guy, right? Yeah. 
No, he's yeah, he's a yeah. stand-up guy, and he does he does cover the team very fairly. And my the tweet that I sent out on that particular particular night had nothing to do with him and more to do with radio personalities. Mm. And so he he sort of called my attention to this the distinction between the guys who are covering the team, like they are they are on the Habs beat and they're covering the team on a daily basis, and people who are you know, on the radio and like he said, sort of paid to, you know, stir up antagonize. controversy, antagonize yeah. and create conversation. Yeah. I'm with you, by yeah. the way. I, I, I understand where Stefan was coming from or why he'd want to go out and chat, but there were a few different things he said that he probably should have kept closer to the sleeve. So I'm with you on that one for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah. now just, I felt I'm, like I was alone there. <laughs> you weren't, but he didn't, he didn't give up either. He wanted to, he, he stuck to his, stuck to his point there for yeah. sure. <laughs> now I got a few different people here. You guys are super popular. You're getting tagged a bunch in the chat and someone uh, was looking to hear from Beth's and I absolutely loved your analogy today about the Lego pieces, putting the, the forward <laughs> group together. It was awesome. So like, what, what are you most excited for about the, uh, the lines tonight coming into this Vancouver game? I I'm excited to see what I, I'm just excited to see what they do. I'm excited to see if they mesh well off more off the bat. If like maybe something will get changed in the game, we don't know. But I'm just excited to see what they produce. I'm just excited to see their their speed, their tenacity, their cohesiveness. Um, I just and then I oh, I can't remember which one it was, but there was. Um, I think it was in Eric's article that he put out in his mailbag um, but when he talked about his lines that he had made, but he mentioned a line that Ducharme had made, and it might not be the same, the same tonight, but he had said that it was it was a it was like a tertiary ordinary line, but he was like, "We're still gonna I'm still gonna put you out against." top lines because you do A, B, and C, and that's what I want you to focus on when you're facing these top lines on these teams. And so it's like one of the biggest issues for me this season has been deployment of the different players, and I am really excited to see the deployment of these lines because I that is something that really needs to be improved for the team to be successful this season. Oh, I'm fully on board with you. One of the, the things I was most looking forward to with uh, Dominic taking over was his willingness or his ability to read his players and then put them in a position to succeed and let the specific skills that each of them have like really flourish. And I think we've seen it already in a few different players, especially Kock and Emmy on the power play and um, uh, Romanov as well. Like the, the confidence level in general with the team has, uh, has been boosted. And I think you're seeing guys really get back to what their, their specialties are. Yeah, and I'll um, I'll jump in with that too. And it, it's really great seeing what uh, Ducharme has been able to do, uh, in particular because he's flying off you know the seat of his pants here. He has no time to implement what exactly he wants to do. He has to do what he can when he can. So you know, um, the Habs might sputter every once in a while, and it's because they're they're still getting used to Ducharme. And though Ducharme has been there behind the bench, he hasn't held the keys to the car. You know, he's uh, mm. he's putting it all together. And it's it's going to be piecemeal because one of the things that I'm looking forward to is, man, are are they ever going to shake up the D lines? And you know, <laughs> first it's the offense, get that going. <laughs> then it's the power play, get that going. And hopefully, sometime soon, maybe we'll see some changes on the D. But um, it's a process, right? <laughs> oh, big time! I I think mostly like what I'd like to see from that decor is the same sort of which I know it's really difficult with a, with a, with D pairs and a decor, but the same sort of willingness to adjust mid game. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with Weber and Romanov being out there together for whatever the situation is during the game. And then say late in the game, that's when Weber pairs up with Ben Sherratt to close out a lead or whatnot. Um, I mean, they struggled with it the other night, but uh, uh, yeah, something's going to be done, but it's yeah. cool one, to see the changes. Happen. One major mistake did it, but what can you do? Yeah. And who do you think that that was, David? Oh, yeah. Erica tore me a new one for that one uh, yeah. the other night. Thank so, you. Sherrod was the guy that I saw was out of position. Eric mentioned that the neutral zone uh, uh, breakdown was the, was the primary thing that uh, that led to that goal. But at the same time, oh, my God, who was who the shooter? Got that, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all credit to him. An absolute snipe of a shot. 
you know, the guy the guy had a world class chance and he took it and he didn't make a mistake and uh, unfortunately the Habs pay for it. It's funny because as fans and if particularly on Twitter, we try to pick the the you know, the villain on, on the losing play and it's really encouraging to me. <laughs> it's really uh, um I, I enjoy seeing that the coaching staff and the team never treats it that way. They never treat it the same way as, as we as fans with our passion and anger and everything else, the way that we see a play happen. Uh, it's just, if shit happens, it happened. We got a point. It's all good. Yeah. Um, we're going to make it back tonight. <laughs> but as far as, you know, with Ducharme breaking up the, the D pairings and eventually everything like that, he, he has to take his time like he's he's certainly taken liberties already just a few games in with all of the forward lines but with the d pairings this is something like you have to be like really loath to mess with and to mess with it at this stage i just i mean you might try to play with it a little bit in practice but it's kind of like the d the d lines are kind of sacred right he at, at least you know mete has now been a healthy scratch right i don't know how long but like to mess up the top pairings or the top four, that to me it just seems like anathema. Yeah, I agree with you. It's like the foundation. I think they want to get the the rest of it fixed first before they go messing around with um, you know, yeah, the, that decor, right? Because things could really go awry if you're you're experimenting with your forwards and then all then at the same time you're experimenting with your your defense, especially when what everyone is calling for is Romanov to go up with Weber, and then you're, I mean. Maybe he deserves a shot, but at the same time, he's such a young kid, and the last thing you want is for him to get exposed while the forwards are trying yeah. to, you know, figure it out as well. Yeah. Um, and as for the the end play there, I, I should say, um, Eric, he did give it to you a bit there, Dave, eh, with that play. <laughs> and I I see where Eric's coming from, and maybe you could blame it a little bit on Dano, you know, kind of losing his man and got at maybe, and then like he mentioned, Sherratt didn't read it quick enough i'm not sure i really josh agree. anderson yeah and josh anderson kind of floating in the neutral zone I'm, i went back and watched the goal again and i'm like i see where he's coming from but i think the main point that eric made which is so true is that it all happens in like a split second yeah so how can you really blame one specific guy right it doesn't take much to get drawn uh, at a position and then a guy's free mm -hmm. and it was just the other thing too you have to give credit to um to the shooter and I couldn't remember if I did in my post game video. So I also went back and was like, please, please. I really hope I gave credit to Gaudette. And I did, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but it's true. Like this, this, some of the shooters in the NHL are just fantastic. And when they get a clean look like that, they're going to bury it. And um, I don't know if you listen to TSN 690, but Dan Robertson was actually talking about that uh, final you know, the, the goal that tied it on, uh, what night is this? Thursday? What are we, Wednesday? Monday night. Yeah. Um, the goal that tied it with Godet's goal. He's just like, at this level, you make one mistake and it's game over every time. So that's, you know, that's how high the stakes are right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that you saying that just reminded me about how upset I was with, um, uh, one of the losses against the Senators, we've played these teams so much, but there was one specific Ugh. game where we played them and they were literally handing us the puck in the in our offensive zone. Yeah. And we could not finish plays. It, and it might have been Claude's last game, maybe. It was like, how can uh, how can our opponent mess up so often and we're not burying our chances on it? That was definitely one of the most <laughs> frustrating losses of the season. Anyway, um, that's 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 old news. <laughs> David can share some thoughts on that. It was oh my God, I I don't <laughs> want to go in on that. So, <laughs> when, so Matt, what you mentioned before the the game that um, sealed Claude's fate. That first period of that game, I think, was some of the worst hockey I've seen in my life in the NHL. It was just abysmal. Like, do, do yeah. you remember how bad they looked? Oh, it was in so their, bad. In their own zone. I was saying oh to Veronica, God, not only just... in their own zone, but the Ottawa Senators were playing like garbage too like they were giving us the puck oh yeah in our offensive zone and just handing it to us to score and montreal couldn't finish i couldn't believe it yeah i was i was packing my bag to you know break quarantine and go across the border so <laughs> might all throw me in there coach and see what you can do right <laughs> but it was it, i mean absolutely not i'd get killed by kachuk anyway uh it was just it was so so bad and when it when it comes to the the shortened season you can't 
not take advantage of teams that are struggling, which, um, you know, also goes into the talk about how bad we've been in overtime. You know, this stuff's going to matter at the end, you know, if the Habs can't clean up uh, on a, uh, you know, winning, you know, in regulation. Yeah. Yeah, we're saying, like, I've said it a couple times now that the extra points are keeping it, us alive. But at the same time, it could be what kills us at the end when we're regretting not getting those points. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be one of those hindsight things at the end of the season, depending on what happens. But, man, it's, it's, <laughs> if one part of your game is going really poorly, you got to work on it. But, you know, as we said before, Ducharme can only do so much with the practice time that he has. Yeah. Well, and... Just on that point, uh, talking about positives, face-offs, power play. <laughs> Positive? In the Ducharme era. Yeah, that's true. It has trending. It's turned around. Yeah. It's trending up. It's trending up. It's trending in the right direction. I mean, even, I know power we've play had, especially. yeah, power play especially, and I know we've had two OT losses under Ducharme, but at the same time, the way they're approaching it has been different. Like even we once the Jets got the puck the other night and ended up just kind of hemming us in, it, that is what it it is. But before that, the first two minutes, they were taking their time. They weren't forcing yeah. the play. Where in the past, you'd see them come in and just there was one play a couple of games ago where it was like a two on one. Armia gets the puck on his backhand and he just backhands it towards the net on some weak chance. But that has completely changed. It's a breath of fresh air. And then to see the power play as well. And I'm glad you called out the face offs because. Something's changing there, so they're working on yeah. it. Yeah. And as well, I'm coming, but I'm um, just really quick. I'm just looking at a, a quick look at the faceoff stats. Like, okay, the Canadiens versus the Jets. Um, both games, the Habs just killed the Jets on faceoffs, like yeah. uh, by a margin of 43 to 57, 41 to 59. Another game, and those are the two most recent games. So that's that's great. Not great against the Canucks, but it's. It's a work in progress. These poor kids. <laughs> so, someone just someone just commented, uh, Destroyer Maker from uh, our Habs on Reddit. He said, Plucky's giving advice over Zoom. <laughs> oh, yes. Please, God. Bring him back as a coach. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my please. God. Who? Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the other thing that, that is trending upwards is that one of the people, one of my, one of the people that I was talking with on Twitter today said, why do we suck so much in overtime? And I was like, we didn't lose in overtime last on, on Monday. Yep. We lost in the shootout. So that's already a step in the other direction. We will well, we win in overtime. We're going to win it in time this season. In the shootout. <laughs> well, yeah, because for God knows what reason, they didn't put out Corey Perry. Who, by the way, I'm calling that he gets a goal tonight. He's slick, eh? He's very slick. Yeah, he's not fast. He's slick. Yeah. slick. Yeah, of I all mean, the surprises this season, Corey Perry is the guy that surprised me this season. I am finding it hard to just to continue to dislike him. <laughs> <laughs> well, just wait until he's a duck again. I was in the no. uh, I was in the minority because I love the Ducks and I'm a, a night owl, so I'd watch uh -huh. their games late, and I was like, oh. so I loved Corey Perry, and even though he's an absolute shithead, right? And we haven't even seen that much with the Habs yet, but he's, he's going to, yeah, we're going to see it, but yeah, I, I love that he's uh, coming around for uh, a lot of the, the Habs fans. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So I think it's actually game time. Hey. Yeah. It looks like it's yeah. game time in Vancouver. Yeah. I'm yeah. The game, uh, three games starting. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, where can everyone find you guys? If they, you know, I'm sure everyone has already, you guys are huge. Over to you, Dave. Um, well, well, my name is David Oje, and I'm at MiddleDave02 <laughs> on Twitter.com. And Beth? Well, I'm at H-I-V-E-R-H-Y-T on Twitter. And Veronica? Yeah, I'm at C-H-I-L-E underscore Pepper on Twitter. And we're the Happy Hour. At Happy Hour on Twitter, <laughs> at Happy Hour Pod on Instagram, and YouTube slash Happy Hour for videos of our recordings. I think that's everything, right? We don't have anything else? I think that's it. Instagram. I think that's, and, I think um, that's it. Uh, yeah. yeah. YouTube. Awesome. You're, you're a great we'll host, Dave. Eventually. <laughs> Um, I love, uh, I know you guys, you guys have done a few meetups here and there at the Bell Center. It'll be amazing once fans can actually go to events like that again. I cannot wait to see the Bell Center packed again, maybe one oh, day yes. down the line. 
uh, I can join you guys for a game there. I'd love to get to Montreal again sometime and meet some of the Oh, yeah, I would there. love to. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. It would be an absolute joy. We can yes, get drinks, yes, we can please. eat, watch some hockey. Yes. And either I can be super depressed at a bar or super no. at a bar after the game. Dave <laughs> speaks <laughs> excellent French, excellent Quebecois when he's drunk. It's wonderful. No, 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 no. no. I mean, my Quebecer is real bad. <laughs> no, but, but when you've had several beers, uh, he thinks he, he can only speak French. You can only speak Quebecois. <laughs> <laughs> Quebecois All right, we're, All right let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, okay. Let's go have go. Go let's have go. go. Have go. Thanks for joining us. Go joining have me, guys. go. Woo. Thank you, man. It was an absolute Thanks pleasure. Thanks for having us. No problem. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Four for four. That was awesome. That whole pregame was awesome, and it flew by, literally. I can't believe we've been doing this for two hours.